A ghost town resides in the Croom Wildlife Management Area, a place called Oreo that one can still uncover by hiking through the surrounding forest. Joe, we're at the Ridge Manor Trailhead. I guess it's the beginning of our journey. That's right, we're here at the Withacoochee State Forest, and we're right here along the Withacoochee State Trail. Today, it's a paved bike trail. People come out here and bike along it, hike along it. Going back to the 1800s, there's was actually an old railroad line, and it connected many old Florida towns. You know, people going by in their bikes don't realize the history they're passing up. That's why we're gonna get you out hiking today, check out some history here in the forest. I like your shoes, but I'm not sure about my <laughs> shoes. <laughs> You may have to carry me on your back, mm -hmm. is what I'm saying. Yeah. Joe Dunn has a passion for discovering remnants of the past, like the lost town of Oriel, which at one time, according to its postmaster, was growing quickly with settlers from the north. I have the coordinates here, Glenn, and I'm um, just checking these to make sure we stay on trail, yeah. stay on track, and get to the site. Yeah, because I don't want to end up in Georgia. Joe wanted to show us evidence of an old homestead nearby with its tattered windmill still standing. Joe, we found tin, which is probably remnants of the old homestead, so the, the windmill should be nearby. Well, look up, Glenn. Uh, the windmill? Uh, the windmill would pump the water out of the ground, so it was a water source. It would have been part of a settlement that was here, close to the old town of Oriel. You know, with the materials that we found, we could start a new town and call it Glen Joe. That's right, that sounds like a great plan to me. With a watchful eye, scattered signs of early settlement can be found. But for more definitive proof of Oriel, Joe was leading us to a nearly forgotten link to its past. Uh, uh, Is this the part where I'm going to carry you out? <laughs> yeah, it might be. Glenn, we made it to the cemetery. Well, I didn't see a sign that said, beware all ye who enter here, so I guess we're okay. It was a long hike up here. Would you like some water? Yeah, I thought you'd never ask, Joe. <laughs> 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 Do you like some more? That's okay, you can have it. Oh, wow, it's really overgrown and a bit neglected back here. Joe, you need to come by sometime and do some maintenance. Sure is, I'll get on that, Glenn. The Giddens name, it's pretty familiar around these parts. Yeah, the Giddens family was one of the first families to settle here back in the mid-1800s. A lot of the early settlers that lived in this area are buried here, and eventually later on became the town of Oriel, and so some of the people from Oriel are buried here as well. An interesting gravesite here. Little Joe. Two years old, 1886, 1888. Oh, poor little guy. Well, what do you think he. Joe? I'm right here. Hi. Don't do that in a place like this. Glenn, I didn't mean to scare you like that. But anyway, what do you think that he died of? Little Joe unfortunately died of, I think, the influenza. Back in those times, the flu was a major epidemic. It's harsh on the people. Joe, we're back on the path which used to be the railroad. That's right. And back in here is Oriole. The town thrived in part due to its proximity to the rail line. Evidence of a sugar mill seems apparent, which was a big industry in these parts. Oriole's population grew to about 100, but freezes that affected crops and influenza outbreaks took their toll and the town was abandoned in the early 1900s. Glenn, what are you doing, checking for bugs, ticks? No, I'm making sure no spirits hitched a ride with me. <laughs> for Out There, I'm Glenn Plaw.